All right, good day everyone. You got Professor Friday from Macomb Community College coming at you one more time. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of second derivatives with implicit differentiation. What we have here is an example of what's referred to as a fat circle. It is a circle that kind of bulges out around the edges. Fat circles take the form x to an even power plus y to the same power is equal to a number to that exact same power. Here we're dealing with a case of the power being 4 and our radius being equal to 2. So we got x to the fourth plus y to the fourth is equal to 16. What we're going to do is differentiate implicitly. So we're going to start by simply taking a derivative of both sides. So we take the derivative with respect to x to the left hand side which is x to the fourth plus y to the fourth derivative of the right hand side would be the derivative of 16. So from here, since we're taking a derivative with respect to x, x to the fourth is going to be simply power rule 4x cubed. Now for the y to the fourth, this is where we're going to be using a little bit of the chain rule in our implicit differentiation. First, we differentiate y to the fourth with respect to y, and then we multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. That is our chain rule. So we get 4y cubed times dy dx. On the right hand side, the derivative of a constant with respect to any variable is going to be zero. No big deal there. So from here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, make sure that we can see this okay. There we go. That's much better. All right, so from here, I'm going to solve for dy dx. So a little bit of algebra, I'm going to subtract the 4x cubed from both sides. We'll get 4y cubed times dy dx is equal to negative 4x cubed. And then we'll divide by y cubed on both sides, or excuse me, by 4y cubed on both sides. We get dy dx is equal to negative x to the third over y to the third. The 4s will cancel each other out. Now that I have my first derivative, I'm going to take the second derivative of that. So because this is going to be significant, I'm going to put it in a little box here. Make sure that I know where it is for later, because I'm going to be using it a little bit later. So, now that we've got our first derivative, to get our second derivative, we differentiate the derivative. Well, this will give us a d squared y, dx squared, is equal to... Now the expression that we have is negative x cubed over y cubed, so we're going to start with the quotient rule. So for the quotient rule, we'll keep that negative sign outside. I tell my class this is low d high less high d low over the square of what's below. Or when you say it in rhythm, low d high less high d low over the square of what's below. So, that gives us our quotient rule. We have a couple more derivatives to evaluate here. Keep our negative sign out front. So we'll have y cubed times derivative with respect to x of x cubed is a power rule. That'll be 3x squared minus x cubed times derivative of y cubed. This is going to be another chain rule or implicit differentiation. We take the derivative with respect to y and then multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x. This is all over y to the sixth power. I'm going to try to pretty this up a little bit. Negative. <clears throat> this will be 3x squared y cubed minus 3x cubed y squared times dy dx. Now, rather than calling it dy dx, though, I'm going to reference back up here to the expression that we had up here for what dy dx is equal to. I'm going to plug that in for my dy dx. That is negative x cubed over y cubed. Yo dog, I heard you like fractions. Now you got fractions inside of your fractions. So how are we going to deal with the fact that we now have a y cubed inside the denominator of the numerator? Well, first thing we can do, 3x squared y cubed Alright, so I'm going to take this minus sign, combine it with this minus sign, and now we got a plus. I'm going to cancel out two of the, y, the, two of the factors of y with two of the factors of y, 
and take that x cubed out front. So this will be 3, x to the 6th, and we can call that y to the minus 1. All over, still got y to the 6th. So I'm going to recopy this expression at the top of the back of this page so that we can keep going. Assuming I can actually get these pages apart. So at this point, once again, we have that d squared y, dx squared is equal to, we had a negative sign out front, and this was 3, I'm going to reference back here real quick, 3x squared y cubed plus 3x to the 6th, y to the minus 1, all over y to the 6th. Now that y to the minus 1 is causing me some grief. I don't like to have fractions inside of fractions, so I am going to get rid of that by multiplying by y over y. That factor of y distributes to both terms in the numerator, giving us 3x squared y to the 4th plus 3x to the 6th, all over y to the 7th. Now at this point it might look like we are done. And as far as the calculus goes, we pretty much are done. However, I'm going to factor out a greatest common factor from the numerator. From the numerator, the two terms have in common a 3x squared, leaving me with y to the fourth plus x to the fourth, all still over y to the seventh. The reason that that's significant is that this y to the fourth plus x to the fourth is a quantity from the other side of the paper. The thing that we started with, our fat circle, was x to the fourth plus y to the fourth equals 16. That's a substitution that we can make here. y to the fourth plus x to the fourth is equal to 16. So we'll make a quick note here that x to the fourth plus y to the fourth is actually equal to 16. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make that substitution. So instead of y to the 4th plus x to the 4th, this is now equal to 16. Denominator is still y to the 7th. Last step for simplification. This is the second derivative. And this is negative 48x squared over y to the 7th. That is my final answer. This is the second derivative of a fat circle in terms of just x's and y's. I hope that this helps you in studying for your tests, and uh, I'll see you next time.